Welcome back to another morning sort of episode of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, and she'll be see what's going on on our lovely island of Fawn Hollow today. Where, yep, it's the morning because I'm going to be busy in the afternoon. We're going to be go to watch uh, Shang-Chi and the, what's it, Legend of the Ten Rings? Hold on. I, I know absolutely nothing about this movie, by the way. So, um, uh, I know nothing about who this person is. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, yes. Uh, but apparently you can you can just watch it and it's fine. Uh, my friends just wanted to watch it, so and they were like, "Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Sure, why not?" Good morning, everyone. Right now in Fawn Hall, it's eleven fifty-six p.m. on Sat Saturday, September eleventh, twenty twenty-one. No need to speak up today, but yeah. Um, so hopefully that will be good. I don't know. It's apparently it's quite a long movie. Um, as I often say before, I'm not very clued into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm I'm quite like out of the loop of it. Not in any sense where I'm just like, oh. You know, I've watched them and I have no idea what's going on. It's more like I've I watched the only things I've watched have been like when friends are like, "Do you want to watch this?" and I was like, "Sure." <laughs> As I said before, superhero things aren't really my thing. Think fast, kind of bit. You ever buy something for? Oh, no, no, we, we've had this one before. And something from Gulliver, which will throw away his letter. Sorry, Gulliver. <laughs> I wouldn't want to, but look how look how beautiful weather today in Animal Crossing. Look at that, not a cloud in the sky. Uh, what day is it today? Saturday. Yep, okay. Okay, Slider is here. Let us just take a glance at these presents. Hold on a second. And I'm back. Oh, and I'm back in room, as an old teacher used to say. Uh, what have we got to do today? Animal Crossing wise, not, nothing really. Talk, customize, fish bugs. Talk, customize, fish bugs. Okay. Yeah, um, so that's why we're recording in the morning today. I guess I'll tell you tomorrow how the movie is. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it's good, but like, I mean, I've heard most things of the Marvel Cinematic Universe are good. It doesn't mean I really go out to watch them normally. <laughs> and, you know, if it's boring, I guess I'll just sleep in the movie. I don't know. It's good. It's very long, you know. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of super long movie trends. I suppose it depends on the movie. Perhaps it's because I'm not as envious. Not like, not infused, I'm not like, I'm not like, oh, I can't, I can't think of a, a, a fate worse than watching this movie. No, I mean like, um, um, I don't have any invested, I suppose, interest in it compared to other people. So that's probably why I like, I'm sure if I really loved it and this was like my favourite superhero or something, I'd be like, three hours is not, not long enough. I don't actually know if it's three hours long. It, it might be two and a half, I can't, I can't quite recall, you know, you know Marvel. Probably better than I do, to be honest. Um, yeah, so, it's just the morning, I haven't really been up to much, just... You know, played a few games, woke up, of course, had breakfast. Um, I did the dictionary.com crossword puzzle. It was, I'm getting better because this is one I did without having to switch to expert mode. Oh, uh, switch off expert mode, sorry. So I did it all in expert mode. It was a very scary moment when you feel like you've completed the entire crossword and then you, it's just not, it doesn't come up with a pop up being like, oh, crossword completed. So you're just like, oh no, one of these words somewhere is wrong. Luckily, I did find it. It was, it was because, um, spoiler for today's crossword puzzle, I suppose, uh, for dictionary.com. Uh, one, one of the clues was inject, and it crossed over with another word which was like a um, sheltered inlet or something. I, I can't quite recall. A phrasing. And so for sheltered inlet, I put like caves. And then that gave me peaks as <laughs> the word for inject. And I was like, what the heck is, what the heck's peaks? It's not a word I've never heard of. And then when I was going through across well, I just check it all I was like ah there should probably be pokes right pokes and c cuffs coves cuffs what what am I saying but yeah um this morning uh what am I gonna do today apart from Shang-Chi I'm probably going to draw the, the thumbnail ah <laughs> why does this always happen <laughs> I'm probably going to draw the thumbnail out for um the life is strange uh true colors with who's the protagonist alex i think uh, i haven't even started on it um because it's still I, I haven't recorded any of it yet it's still technically not set in stone whether i'm going to do um life is strange true colors or if i'm going to do which one called it uh later alligator but they both they both will be games i play it's just which one am i going to do first i suppose because you know as I was saying, Life is Strange is kind of expensive. 50 pounds is kind of a lot for a video game. It's not a lot for a video game, but often the way I buy video games is when they're on sale, like years afterwards. Or I buy indie titles, which tend to be considerably cheaper. So yeah, I don't know. But 
I am I'm, I am quite interested to play this game, so that's why I kind of want to. And you know, had some birthday money recently, which is, you know, it's got a bit of funding. <laughs> so we might check it out. Apparently, don't starve together. Wonders new new character. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna check if it's fifty pounds or not. There's so many games I want to play. There's too many games I want to play. It's got very positive reviews, though. I must say, not recommended. Disappointed. It's disappointing. Oh, spoiler alert. Pretty disappointing. Pretty huge life is strange fan, but didn't enjoy it. Great characters, great vision improvements, beautiful settings, weak narrative, weak ending. Felt ripped off, boring son soundtrack, boring power, wasn't explored. I didn't enjoy this game, especially not at its price. Hmm. It's not worth full price. Based on my own experience, reviews 100% spoiler free, gameplay and interaction, graphic sound, performance optimization, sto story and con. I don't know, but the top two rated reviews are just like, ah, oh, it's not, the story's bad. This is a worth Life is Strange game. I don't, pros, cons, weak story. Weak ending, unexplored. Okay, so it's basically, this game has a terrible ending. From what I can tell. <laughs> probably, probably shouldn't have read about it. Well, I don't, I don't know what the ending is, but I just know... Now it's bad. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Plus, I've played games with bad endings before. <laughs> games that have missed a mark on the ending. Like, I mean, if the rest of the gameplay was fine, then that's a, that's a cool part, I suppose. Power not explored enough. I can I can certainly see that happening. I feel like this is a very cool power. One that can lend well to conversations and decision making and that sort of thing. But maybe not. I don't know. I I do not know how to say on Apollo. I'm sorry to say. Well, well, apart from a very rudimentary understanding. My, my throat. It's a morning, so my throat is all like gravelly and stuff. <laughs> Hasn't completely warmed up, but it's very annoying. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking, like, if I finish A Life is Strange, um, blah, 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 and today and tomorrow is probably what I'll be doing over, and it's very quick, and when I decide later not to do it, then, um, Maybe I'll just do the later alligator one really quickly because later alligator's got very sim simplistic heart style, so it probably won't take too long to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe but this is where, like, sorry, I'm, I'm doing again. I'm doing a thing where I just do all like my my research in the middle of an Animal Crossing video. This is where you go to Arshlas Games and you look up for the review thread for Life is Strange. It's like Life is Strange. True colors. Make sure you spell it the American way. Review Fred. Just seeing if there's anything else a bit more recent. Doesn't seem like it. Do, do, do. Get, gets around 80s. 70s to 80s. Which is fine. Recommended. Hundreds. We need to see some low ratings. 60s, 50s, 40s. Low budget, rushed and episodic. Underwhelming. compelling protagonists it takes far too long to develop I, d I don't know but the stream gas we remember making me hold it for video but I rated it to buy as well really solid I don't know most people are saying it's pretty good I suppose the steam reviews are probably just a bit more negative than usual maybe because um negative reviews I don't know if negative reviews necessarily get updated uploaded maybe people on steam the general steam audience just doesn't like life is strange my, my sorry my hand was on the, the scroll over had another the controller so it's probably hit or miss, slower narrative. So I guess that this is sort of thing that your mileage may vary on it. The game feels fairly short because you can just binge yourself out entire way through. Hmm. You know, it's certainly gonna have to do some kids consideration. Well, this is the right game for me or not. <laughs> I don't know, I want to give it a try. A pie bon pine bonsai tree. Unfortunately, that's what we, already, we already know, but yeah. Like, I mean, of course, all these things are always subjective. I talked about this before, and especially with game reviews. I'm just like, oh, I, I wish it was, I could find a reviewer who was basically subject, who, who basically had my exact tastes. <laughs> so then it'd be a lot easier to determine whether I'd like a game or not, because there are games out there which perhaps the general populace might not like so much, but I might have a stronger affinity for. 
you know? Like, I know Night in the Woods can be very hit or miss for people, but I personally really loved it. Um, things like that. Okay, but, like, um, I don't know, maybe some people find Baba's YouTube frustratingly difficult, and I found it an apt difficult difficulty level, and it has my, become my favourite puzzle game. And there's probably other games out there, maybe, like, Dark Souls, people would be like, it's the best game in the world, and I'd be like, I can appreciate the craftsmanship, but it's just not my type of game. I don't actually know, I've never played Dark Souls. I've never been particularly intrigued by the medieval sort of fancy aesthetic. Well, not medieval fancy. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of more like gritty medieval aesthetic. So I, I've never really given it a fair shake because aesthetics tend to matter quite a lot for me when I play games. <laughs> I like a game I can look at and appreciate looking at. Which I, I, I would say it's controversial, but it's not really. I mean, like, as I said, everyone's got different parts that I like about games. And I like games which have gameplay that I enjoy, but aesthetics I enjoy a lot more. Sometimes. You know, mileage may vary, that sort of thing. Because I like Isaac a lot, despite the fact that Isaac's... <laughs> um, well, graphically, it's well executed. It's just like um, the design choice, I suppose, <laughs> does not particularly appeal to me. And probably doesn't appeal to a lot of people. Okay, one more fish. Five bugs. No, 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 why am I so bad? Oh, but, but do be just how it is. Um, I don't, I want to see like user reviews. I guess it hasn't been out for long enough maybe for there to be a user review fed. What, what's a, what's a site that people use for video game reviews nowadays? What has user reviews, let's see. Metacritic? Sure. I'll see some user reviews. It's rated M! What? There's no user reviews yet. I guess it just hasn't been out strong, uh, long enough. So, it seems about on par with a first Life is Strange rating wise. Perhaps it appeals to some people more than others, but still. I still want to give it a shot. It's just expensive, to be honest. <laughs> That's a thing. This is weird because I'm trying to think when the last time I bought like a game at full price, like a, a AAA title at full prices. It must have. It's, it's been ages. I'm trying. To, I'm really trying to think. Hold on. Rainbow Six each. I guess. No, I, I bought it on sale though. To be fair, <laughs> it was like twenty pounds for the entire package with all the starting. Starting operators, which now, as I understand it, you get it for free. I think, even in the, the starter pack, which is pretty cool. I haven't played Siege for ages, though, mainly because my friends kind of stopped playing it. I didn't want to play games alone, and also I got bored of it. My, not bored of it myself, but uh, the, the, the zest and love for it. Not the zest and love like died out or anything, but just more like eh, I didn't really feel like playing it much anymore. <laughs> not much more complicated than that. Yeah, um, like video game prices, it's, it's crazy how much they changed in the past few years. Because I remember when I was much younger, I used to buy like Nintendo games for like AAA Nintendo Go One. It's not like I used to, it was me using pocket money given to me by my parents, which I saved up over weeks or something. Um, I used to buy video games, um, they used to be like the AAA Nintendo titles used to be like 30 pounds or something, even cheaper in some cases. Like, I remember I bought Super Paper Mario not far from Lisa and it was like 25 pounds or something. I was like, whoa. And now they're like double the price. Which, you know, part of it I'm sure is to do with inflation. I'm not a, a, an economy major, so my knowledge of inflation is, you know, quite limited, I suppose. I'm sure part of it's due to inflation, but part of it's also like video games are getting higher quality and, you know, the amount of financial cost which goes into creating them, I suppose, demands a higher price to sort of offset those prices. I guess, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Obviously people out there are much more knowledgeable than me on that sort of thing, so they'll know better. And indie games, they tend to be considerably cheaper, because I, I, I guess maybe... I mean, <laughs> I suppose it's just people won't give it like a shot if they see in a, a really expensive indie game, right? And that's really the only way they can sort of price themselves competitively and hope that they uh, kick off. And I suppose 
the caveat of that is they then have less to spend on marketing and that sort of thing. Well, I suppose indie developers probably don't know much in the way of that sort of budget in the first place. So I guess the only sort of hope is really um, some streamer making it incredibly popular or something or just kicking off in a niche community. Like a... <laughs> Well, I was going to say like Among Us, but not quite Among Us how you know it right now. Because apparently Among Us used to be just like extremely popular, but like only in Brazil and South Korea or something. I can't, I can't quite recall. It had a very, um, it was not as popular than but like European and American crowd or whatever. From what I recall, I feel, I, I feel like I read about this. <laughs> and I suppose that could be a surprising thing if you're an indie developer, just seeing um, like where your like niche communities pop out from. Like, um... What's that game? It's like Skullgirls. It's like, it's a, it's in my opinion, a really cool fighting game. But like, it, it, it's not like obviously it's not. It can't compete to the Titans in the West, but it has a pretty decent Japanese following, I think. But that's perhaps in part due to the fact Japan really loves fighting games, perhaps more than West. I don't know. I don't know. But these sort of things are very interesting. It's just weird to see how much um, the pricing has changed. For these sort of things. Like now people like £60 for like a AAA title or something would be like, oh you know, that's just kind of how it is. Uh, well, what's the biggest AAA title that was released recently? I want to go look up its price. Hold on. Recent AAA title games. Let's see, top, top 10 upcoming. Maybe some of these have already been released. Far Cry 6, is that? Oh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That's apparently been released. How, how expensive is it? Shopping. That's only £40. Fif £58 on Amazon, which I suppose is probably first hand. Why is it so cheap on? <laughs> um, I can't think words. Why is it so cheap on eBay? For some reason. Okay, let's sell some things. It always makes me think about how mobile um, games are sort of priced. The fact that they're free to download and most of the time we just have copious amounts of microtransactions to support it. And that's just how it happens to be the, the best pricing model for um Oh my god. Games on mobile because pricing games at full like retail, like console value on mobile just no one buys it case study look at um what was it mario run it's not called mario run you know that mario game that nintendo released on um mobile it was it was like 15 pounds or something it was like full um regular video game price and like most people i believe a general consensus was like i'm not going to pay that much for a mobile game i guess it's like people in their mind i'm not sure if it's like a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy sort of thing where uh, i don't think we have that where people are just, where either it's people are like, mobile games shouldn't be that expensive in the first place because they're mobile games. Like it's, it's not like a, a real console or whatever. So any game on there should just be the equivalent price of like a, a small toy or something. Or it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy is because like, it turned out most people would download free games. So that those are the only ones that which people downloaded and tried. And then every time that someone else has tried to release a more expensive game, it's just like, why, why would I download this game when I could just, download a free game instead <laughs> like you know i guess there's always something to be said about the predatory nature of um, relying on whales quote quote to support um a mobile game uh, financially right to, to rely on only 10 percent of your audience and while the other 90 percent are either low spenders or play the game for free it's i don't know then it's, it's obviously it doesn't quite sit right with me but it's just i, I guess for some reason mobile markets strangely unique oh obviously take everything i say with a grain of salt this is not research this is just completely off a dome piece of like my my gut feelings which is you know not a good source of any sort of evidence to be honest apart from exactly what my stomach's feeling like right now i guess um it's just weird how how different the market is isn't it how the, the mobile market feels so detached and different from every other market <laughs> in, the, in the video game sphere and it's just weird how it's evolved that way like the metrics you had to use is now different because you can't really judge things on sales anymore because the sale price is free. You had to judge based off like revenue, I suppose, or 
income from microtransactions, which is weird and strange. And it's incredibly strange that it's only a small portion of your audience which even partakes in them in the first place. That's just... I don't know. And the whole gacha system, like, enticing it in the first place with ex extraordinary prices for premium currency. Like, the cost of 30 pounds, like, 60 pounds, like, that's a triple-A title, if you really want to think about it. And that would be, like, what, like, 30 pulls or something in a game? Which is, like, what, like, 30% chance to even get, like, the highest rarity thing? That's wild to think about, especially framed in that way. So, really, I guess these, these games aren't that expensive as I thought. So, that's, you know, all I had to do was compare it to mobile games. And now I've sort of come around on it and been like, hey, you know what? Maybe I will play Life is Strange True Colors and buy it. When am I going to record it? I don't know, because I need to actually record it kind of soon. Because the last episode is going up. A bug stacks on Monday, so I had to do it. I'm probably not going to do it tomorrow. Either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, one of those days. To be fair, I only need to record, like, one episode. And then I'll have a bit more time to get other stuff done. And to be fair, Life is Strange is the only thing I need to record, because the other games have been recorded about a month in advance. Just because I had nothing else to play. You know, normally I rotate between three games, so they only stay about two or three weeks in advance. But since I've only been playing two games, um, it's crazy far in advance. You might say, have they finished yet? No, Celeste's still going on. Celeste's very nearly done. I'm, I'm on, like, the second last level, I think. What's the other one? Tal Talus Principle is still got tons left, so I don't even worry. It's probably about halfway through, is what I'd guess. Um, change clothes and deep sea diving. So yeah, I, found, I, I guess that's one better for mobile games. I could just compare mobile games to AAA titles and be like, you know what? Pricing's not that bad in the first place. <laughs> when you think of it like that. And plus, Life is Strange is like, I'm not sure if it's been updated. Like, I, I think I checked yesterday how long to be, and it was like 14 hours, which is not bad, to be honest. How long to be Life is Strange True Colors? About 14 hours is estimate. People have been polling around 10 to 11 hours. Very much depending on how, how how much of every single collectible I suppose you want to collect and that sort of thing. I don't know why we ran inside here, but I guess we'll just sort of clear out our storage while we're here. I know, I know, I remember now, it was to change clothes. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I remember reading a tweet by like a, a dev ages ago being like, video games have been incredibly incredibly like underpriced for like years now and only, only in recent years have they really been like sold for what they're worth and i suppose that's part of it due to you know because so many people want to work in the video game so a lot of em employees tend to be like underpaid and that sort of thing which is kind of <laughs> i mean i was gonna be like it kind of sucks yeah it does kind of suck but it feels like kind of dismissive dismissive if i say it like that. that's not what i meant it's just sort of like a, i don't really know what i can do about that unfortunately um i guess the answer is support games are at full value, if anything, to support the devs and that sort of thing. And, I don't know, maybe be supportive of video game unions? Are video game unions a thing yet, or is, have it, has that still not happened? I don't, I don't know, this is, this is very much sort of out of my depth, because it's not my industry. I don't really know exactly what that, what, what it's all about. But yeah, um, it's just kind of like a sucks all around situation, isn't it? There's not really much, much more I can really add to that. Um, but yeah, that was a bit awkward now with that explanation. So yeah, if anything, I guess it's kind of fine where the price that this price right now, I probably should have, you know what, keep this one and store the other one. Because we already have a red one. I believe it's in our wand outfits, if I recall. So I guess a long and short of it really is sort of just like, um, you know, if things are this expensive, that's, that's what they should be priced. So it shouldn't be surprising that video games are more expensive now than they used to be. Because they've been slowly catching up in value to what they should be. Or something along those lines. I don't know how true that particularly rings, because I, I don't really know the, the sort of costs that go into manufacturing video games. I mean, I've done analysis on, like, sales for video games and that sort of thing. And trends based on genres and that sort of thing. But it's, it's you know... That doesn't really give you a peek behind the development process, it only gives you a peek into the sort of... Um... The aftermath, I guess? Maybe aftermath isn't really the right word, but you know what I mean. So yeah, <laughs> sort of just 
a very whimsical discussion about video game prices and all that. I wonder if it'll get even more expensive. Wasn't there that AAA title that was cost like eighty pounds or something on release recently? I can't remember. Maybe not recently, but like, like last few years. It's getting getting real expensive, so it's not surprising that. And I suppose part of it's also because sales are not like as extreme as they used to be. Like you remember the Steam Summer Sale used to get like ninety percent offs. 70% off to 90% off on like certain games even like big AAA titles will get like big like 40% discounts or something and now it's just sort of like a, a flat 30% across the board which by the way is still good it's just like you know I suppose uh, it's sort of not, not as exciting as it as it used to be which is a shame but I suppose there's now more competition now you know you've got Epic Game Store you've got itch.io you've got tons of different sort of um places of which you can actually find games so which by the way maybe I should see is, is Life is Strange Life is strange. True colours. Is it on perhaps like Epic Game Store? Or is it only on Steam for PC? Or is it Ultimate Edition? Digi digital and physical. Standard edition. Square Enix store or Steam. Those are the only two options. <laughs> How much does it cost on the Square Enix store? Let's see. I didn't even know Square Enix had a store. Put in mind date of birth. It's gonna make up a random date of birth. You can't stop me. Yeah, I'm born in 1943. 50 pounds. No, it's exactly the same. <laughs> and you just buy the Steam version anyway. What? <laughs> it's, it's literally on the, on the store. It's got the Steam box art. So, I don't know. Basically. While I could wait for it to go on sale in Steam eventually, many years down the line, or I can play it now, or I can hop onto you know, I can I join the discussion that everyone else is playing the game with. Be like, oh man. When this happened, it was crazy. Without having to avoid spoilers the entire time. I, I can be part of a discussion. Well, I'm not going to be part of a discussion. But I can be part of your observation of a discussion. <laughs> well, it sounds a lot more depressing when I say it like that, to be honest. But honestly, not bad. So yeah. um, There's not really much I need to do today, really. I suppose I do need to... What the heck's a Matan Pushu? That must be a Gulliver item. So let's not sell it. Just need to, you know, get get some of that done, get ready, and then I'll be good. I'll enjoy, enjoy Shang-Chi. Which by the way, considerably... Oh, wait, hold on. Don't tell these, these are Gulliver items. Considerably cheaper to, um... Go to the cinema than to... Uh, than to... Watch call it, buy one of these AAA title video games. You know, AAA title video game, fifty pounds. Cinema trip, six pounds. Incredibly cheap. You know, that, that's outrageously cheap. So you might be like, oh, I could watch ten movies for six pounds. But <laughs> we might think for sorry for one game for like one Life is Strange game. Um, uh, uh, wait, that doesn't work. About eight movies. Sorry. <laughs> but then, I really rather wouldn't watch eight movies. <laughs> I suppose if you want to go by entertainment length as well, but if the movie's an hour long, well, movies are probably on average about 90 minutes long, so it's not even that much more like gameplay. I'm um, sorry, not gameplay time, but entertainment time. So yeah, what I'm saying is, you know, I think it's just been so long since I bought a AAA title at full at full price that I'm just like, wow, this is expensive. When really, it's not all that expensive. It's just the price the price of doing business, I suppose. I still would like to eventually monetize these sort of videos, just so they can fund the video games I buy. I don't, I don't even want it to like fund my lifestyle, necessarily, but I want it just to fund... Um, I want it to be a self-fulfilling cycle, you know? Play games, buy games with ad revenue, and then etc, etc. I mean, I... <laughs> I guess if it somehow started funding my lifestyle, that'd be incredible as well. But let's not, let's obviously be quite realistic. I'm never going to um, be the type of person to make videos which get that sort of view count to fund that sort of lifestyle. And I don't really want to. I just want to play games. I just want to play video games. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'll get to work on my Life is Strange thumbnail art right now. I, I've been looking at it. I think the hardest part is actually going to be drawing the colours behind Alex. <laughs> and not actually drawing Alex herself. But anyway, 
Uh, we'll round up, round up this episode here, so if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares are greatly appreciated. Join me, Dear Darling Discord. Follow me on Twitter down below. I hope we can see each other again, but for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.